Welcome to the line here on New Mexico in Focus. School board elections in Albuquerque are coming up next week. The new school board will oversee a district that faces many challenges. Student achievement and school reform are a priority of Governor Martinez, certainly, and the district is searching for a new superintendent. No small thing there. Local media are also reporting on accusations against one school board member running for re-election. Let's dive into this now with our line panelists for this week. One, and what, the first one being Dan Foley, former New Mexico Minority House Whip. Rachel Sam, she's back. She's editor of Albuquerque Business First. Sophie Martin, an attorney and co-publisher of the community website DukeCityFix.com. And Rob Nikoleski of Watchdog.org. Now, Rob, uh, it, it's always a funny thing with school board elections. They always seem to come up when nobody even thinks yeah. about it. Suddenly they're on right. top of us, yeah. right? Nobody knows who's running. No one knows, you know, <laughs> well, the whole thing. Right, why? Before, we, right why? before we started taping today for all your all the people out there in TV land, I turned to Gina and said, what is this election? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's this week. Yeah, you wouldn't oh. have been the only one, sir. You would not have been the only one. But here's what happens. We have this, we have two key things kind of hovering over the school board right now. We've got recent stuff between one of the members, Kathy Cordy, <clears throat> who's been at log jams with our governor and a lot of reform mm -hmm. things. But we've got a, a a superintendent search going on at the same time. Let's take these things one at a time. How do we get this school board to one, be more noticed by the general public to get involved with the election? And two, what are the stakes at play here for the school board this time around? Uh, I'll do the second one sure. first. Mm -hmm. and I, the, the, the Kathy Court uh, issue is, uh, mm -hmm. it's wow. I mean, this is New Mexico politics right. at its fiercest. I mean, this is something that's coming from all sorts of different directions. Right. Uh, as far as, uh, what, in an ironic sort of way, to answer your first question, I mean, there's been so much attention, especially around this court's uh, right. re-election bid. It has drawn a lot of attention sure. to the to, sure. to the school board race that I think most people wouldn't have noticed before. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Rachel, good to see you. Let's, let's get into this Kathy Court thing just a little bit. What had happened most recently in the reporting in the journal is that she received a letter from the executive committee of three members of the school board saying, look, you do not handle disciplinary issues. We have a guide for this. It's right here in black and white. You go through the superintendent. You can't freelance. You can't do that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. does that, what does that say to you about what's going on in the, in the board dynamics? Is there anything, anything in your gut speak to this? To rise to the level of a letter uh, yeah. sounds like they really are trying to step out on it. Mm -hmm. um, just in general, it seems like for the past several years, off and on, we've seen a lot of front page stories about APS leaders and some members of the school board mm -hmm. uh, kind of sniping at each other, sniping at other people. Mm -hmm. And it just seems like such a distraction mm -hmm. from the huge job that they have. So no matter how this election cycle turns out, mm -hmm. hopefully after it's over, things will calm down a little. Exactly right. Dan, good to see you. And on the same subject of, of, of Kathy Court and other school board members, in fraction, fractious nature of relationships, that's not a surprise. Certainly school boards, there's lots of different opinions, there's lots of friction, but at the end of the day, we expect something to come out you of know, it though, you, don't but we? But Gene, really, there's really not. School boards usually run fairly smooth. Okay. Usually the only time you hear of a school board having friction is when they fire a superintendent. <laughs> usually the rest of the time they just kind of show up, they kind of do their thing, they make sure, and, and the legislature took some actions a few years ago. If you remember, there was a real problem in New Mexico where school boards were deciding, that's the football coach, that's the basketball mm -hmm. coach. Mm -hmm. And we actually passed legislation that said, really, it's against the law to do that now. All you do is hire the superintendent and let them do their job. So really, outside of APS, the school boards have really kind of taken a step back mm -hmm. and hire the, the superintendent and let them run their deal. This school board member, particularly that's up for re-election, I, I mean, I, you know, she's crazy. I don't, know, I don't know a better way to say it. I mean, she's... She's run a blog attacking people, but the minute someone says something about her, she's like, oh, everybody's attacking me. I mean, it, you, you can't do the things she has done. Mm -hmm. She seems to be acting completely outside of the bounds of responsibility to the board. Mm -hmm. She decides she wants to do something, she goes forward. Mm -hmm. She wants to go after a teacher. She wants to hold a press conference. She wants to go to her own kid's school, be involved in how they're going to run the, the, uh, the, uh, the fundraising committee. She did that for a while. I mean, she just keeps surfacing mm -hmm. and... You know, I think at some point she she thinks that she's the Robin Hood of the APS school board, mm -hmm. but I think you're seeing from this letter that's coming out, I think everybody says enough's enough, mm -hmm. and I think you're going to see in the next election, I think her constituents going to tell her enough's enough. Interesting, and so I'll remind it on Dan's list there, he left off the fact that she, I believe, tweeted something uh, about a legislator being a traitor uh, for, mm. for a vote that yeah. was taken Paul last Pacheco, year. Yeah. Paul Pacheco, that's right, exactly yeah. right, right. I think, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that so there's an interesting dynamic just to sort of pick up on, on the start of what Dan said there, mm -hmm. there's an interesting dynamic that's happening here. Uh, yes, traditionally, school boards have been, I don't know that they've been uncontentious because I think there's always going to be some of that personal dynamic mm -hmm. and different opinions about how things should be run. Mm -hmm. But note that in the last, 
I think probably as far back as the last decade, possibly further, this state has identified and, and our citizens have identified education as one of the very top priorities and one of the very top problems right. in New Mexico. Right. This is the school board for the largest district in the state. Mm -hmm. The pressure has got to be phenomenal and um, especially at, at a time in which we see uh, the governor's office and rank and file teachers really at odds with each other. Right. Here's the school board kind of caught in the middle. Mm -hmm. I, I would not be surprised if this wasn't um, one of the more pressured actually uh, public positions that's out there right now mm -hmm. because of the phenomenal emphasis that's being placed on education right now and the, and the real failure to see tremendous success, mm -hmm. uh, real movement in in uh, the APS. Sure, system. absolutely. You know, Rachel, we've, the other dynamic I want to uh, spin to here is the search for the new superintendent. Definitely. Uh, I have something I want to throw on the table for all of you to kind of chew on here a little bit. It's listed, the gig is listed at $300,000, a little bit less than what Winston Brooks was, was paid. My proposition is that money is short by about two thirds. Mm. And I'll tell you why. This person is expected to run a district of 12,000, uh, 1,200 square miles, 150 some odd schools, 88,000 students, uh, and uh, a head count of 14,000 people. There are some international conglomerates that don't have a head count that big, mm -hmm. for God's mm -hmm. sake. I mean, this is, this is like running a nation state of its own. And I, my pro proposition is- They do have their is, own police department. And they have their own police, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. I'm telling you the gig's worth, if we can pay itinerant football coaches $900,000, why can we Thank not pay you. Thank you. a superintendent of schools and our 88,000 kids? And our educators in general. I mean, this Thank is, this is mm -hmm. a, a constant source of heartburn. Mm -hmm. It's not just how much are we paying the superintendent, but, right. but um, the trickle down to the rest of the, of the staff, to the rest of the teaching corps, right. um, we really are, I, th I think, underpaying all throughout. Rob, what do you think of that? Are we, you get what you pay for. Right. Hey, middling money. We just had a middling result. I, I'm going to put. No, it I, I, I think you bring up a good point. Although I think the, um, mm -hmm. the it's an apples and oranges thing when you talk about about football coaches and basketball coaches because mm -hmm. no one's twenty thousand people aren't showing up in the pit to mm -hmm. listen to a, a, a professor give a lecture or right. a, 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 or a paying school. forty thousand dollars a year for a box. To right. Yeah. So it's but uh, but I do I do mm -hmm. see your larger point and it's you know and, and it's a good point about about the pay what what I found what was interesting was when doing a little bit of research before this is that um, uh, on the APS website, they said they're looking for someone with, quote, excellent people skills. <laughs> well, yeah, I think considering what we've all been talking about for the last five minutes, yeah, I think that's you know, the other Can I tell you something? I, I roared laughing leading, reading those bullet points. <laughs> that's why expectations for the job. I mean, right, the, exactly. You've got great people skills. You should apply. You, got, you run a show. You've you go. got to deal with all of us. Right. I, I I'll think, do it for five. I think, <laughs> I think the problem, though, Gene, that just to touch, and I, you and I always, I always mm -hmm. take shots at you about this. You know that, mm -hmm. is... The difference between the football coach and the superintendent is the market. Okay. I mean, if you want to go get the best football why coach. Are we why are we looking at the lens of the marketplace? Because that's, why, that's why how it is. Why can't the value of this superintendent, someone running a 14,000 person situation, that needs to be valued, well, I, Dan. I, I, that needs, I'm not that, saying that it's not valued. Elevated what somehow. I'm saying to you, though, is that, mm -hmm. so, so Gene, your, your answer is, we believe the market dictates that it's $300,000. Right. We believe that we're going to get very well qualified candidates, they believe. Mm -hmm. You're saying, well, I don't think that's true. It should be an $800,000 job. Mm -hmm. Someone's got to put a value on that job. Mm -hmm. They've put a value of 300000 Now, you'll see what the candidates are that apply. Right. If they're all junior college graduates right. that have, right. you know, are 24 years old, then, yeah, you got to raise the value of the mm -hmm. job. Mm -hmm. But if at 300000 they're getting well-trained, well-qualified, well-people for the job, mm -hmm. the job is what the job is. Mm -hmm. It's the same as the education profession. Should teachers make more? Me, no uh, doubt. running out of time. The job is, however, also, Dan, this person's going to be expected to literally turn around an entire school system and catapult it into the future. Gee, three hundred thousand. I just is don't no think three hundred thousand. It's no money. Dan, to I used to work with at. salespeople who made three bills getting out of bed. I mean, it's just not, not a lot true. of money in twenty fifteen. They made three bills you because know, they worked you know, hard. This guy, this person, could come in and make uh -huh. three hundred. Yeah. This person could turn this. Think about what could happen. You come in the APS as big as you've talked about, and you're right. You turn this around. Guess who's sitting out there looking at you right now? Right. McDonald's just let their CEO go. Right. So now you 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 start talking about them. Hey, I came in to exactly everything you described. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. take that three hundred thousand dollar job, and in three years this turns around, and McDonald's is looking for a new CEO. Guess what? You're not making three hundred thousand to be right. the CEO of McDonald's. Right. That's but what right. does that where does that leave Albuquerque then, though? I mean, first of all, I think that that's a slightly insane uh, job trajectory. But <laughs> but beyond yeah. that, the guy that has we, the McDonald's job, we actually need minute, we need the stability that 
that comes with a leader who can who can continue to work with us. Mm -hmm. And I think the income may be an issue. I'd love to hang a number out there and see who shows up. Honestly, they did the three hundred. So let's see who shows That's up. It's not a number. It's what, not what a do number. you think the number is? What do you think the number is? Let I me think, it's, your I think it's no less than five. And this is off the top, the back of my head. Given what this person is supposed to do, I just I don't see who be, would be attracted to it for three hundred thousand. I would just say this. You know. How about make them an at will employee so we don't have to pay three hundred and fifty thousand dollars for them to leave <laughs> like we did in last year. And, and seal up their performance <laughs> in a vault. Even better. We'll stop there. Up now. Up next, we'll learn what's being done to address homelessness here in Albuquerque.